The cruise is back. Very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And setting sail with the newest and most luxurious ship in the fleet. The decor is fantastic. Majestic Princess is on her maiden voyage from Shanghai to Sydney. Welcome to Sydney, Australia, Majestic Princess. Visiting Asia's megacities. Well, it's amazing. And stunning scenery in New Zealand <gasps> and Australia. It was a kiss. But it won't be plain sailing. Uh, it's typhoon season. Houston, we have a problem. And with three and a half thousand cruises, <laughs> expecting the very best. We're here to make a negative into a positive. That's our job. The crew will be working I want it in half an hour. around the clock. If they're up, yeah, I'm up here. To deliver the holiday of a lifetime. This time, it's basically the world's drop. A pool is taken out of action as temperatures soar to 30 degrees. We're we'll to have to drain the pool tonight. It's pretty hard to swim in the pool with no water. The crew is preparing everyone on board for a crossing the equator party. I don't actually think they know what they're letting themselves in for. It's going to be very, very messy. But the galley is running behind. I'll give you the pastry chef here now. And Chef Nilo is not happy. Find me a jello that is jello. Yeah, yeah. Ah, this is, makes me crazy in the morning. Oh dear. As a tropical downpour threatens to make the whole thing a washout. Okay, we're going to start thinking about plan B. The ship is leaving Singapore halfway through her maiden voyage from Shanghai to Australia. Mr. Pilot. With new captain Dino Sagani at the helm. Very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. He was the ship's inaugural captain and has just returned after a two-month break to take the vessel into the southern hemisphere for the very first time. So I'm very happy to be here now and put down this milestone. It's exciting for all crew and passengers. And start to trust off for a four each end. Crossing the equator is a big event for any ship. And all departments are involved in putting on a huge celebration. Entertainment director Mark is prepping his team. This is just tradition. If people haven't done it before, so if they've not crossed the equator, they are the lowest of the low, they're the dirt. So we look down on them. It's, it's pantomime, pantomime. Old naval tradition dictates that ships must pay their respects to the Lord of the Seas, King Neptune. I'm uh, Neptune. And I'm his really trashy bride. <laughs> Passengers and crew crossing the equator for the first time face an initiation to check they're hardy enough to be sailors. The test? They'll have buckets of food hurled at them, resulting in a massive food fight. Essentially, it's jelly, it's uh, chocolate sauce, it's strawberry sauce, eggs and some spaghetti. I don't actually think they know what they're letting themselves in for at the moment. I mean, it's all well and good describing it, but it's going to be very, very messy. Who doesn't like getting mucky, really? <laughs> Hundreds of passengers are expected to take part in the event, but it's the crew who haven't crossed the equator before who should really worry. I'm so proud of my deck officer because I also have a second officer and two cadets who never crossed the line in their life, so they're going to get absolutely destroyed. I mean, no, we are professionals. Be safe, guys. Veteran health and safety officer Silvio has crossed the line 12 times. Hi. Well, it's like a maritime baptism. You can't say you're a seafarer until you cross the equator at least once. He's looking forward to inflicting the initiation ceremony on second officer Declan and cadet Calvin. You always want to get it out of the way when you're a cadet because the further up in the ranks you go, I think the more people try to take advantage of it <laughs> whenever it's happening. Hi, Calvin. Hello, how are you? Good. Are you ready? I'm very ready. Ready. Uh, I look at the script and the ceremony. It's not looking good for you. Uh. Also, Declan. Finally, you can be called a seafarer, yeah? A real seaman. Huh? After five years. Oh my God, you're gonna get absolutely destroyed. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Calvin and Declan are preparing for the worst. You're gonna be fine. As much as I'm regretting it, I'm glad it's finally getting it over with. As the passengers are enjoying their final hours of Northern Hemisphere sunshine, 
For hotel engineer Scott, there is no rest. He's been called to the Lido pool. How many one of the ladders is brought, so I've just come to check it out, really. So close to the equator, with temperatures regularly above 30 degrees... How are you doing, sir? A problem with the pool is the last thing they need. It looks like one of these have fallen. That one's broken it. Basically, the welds broke. You didn't have to drain the pool to fix I'm it. Gonna have, yeah, I'm going to have to drain the pool tonight. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Pretty hard to swim in the pool with no water. With the equator party imminent, fixing the step is urgent. As the ship sails south, guest services trainer Cynthia has heard there's a problem from one of the passengers. So walking around the ship all the time, I get asked questions and asking how the cruise is going. And somebody just brought to our attention that this elevator has not been working the entire voyage. And we're testing the elevator yes, we are. to see if it's actually working or not. <laughs> No number at all, it's completely blank. And it's not opening as well. Yeah. That particular elevator hasn't worked since we left Shanghai. That's good to know. Good to know. We, we kind of need to know this. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Always on duty, Cynthia will now take the job to the maintenance team to make sure it's sorted. It's the first time I've heard about it. Whether somebody else has heard about it, we don't know, but we're certainly going to find out. We're going to be on it. Upstairs in cabin D202, 86-year-old passenger Shirley is travelling on the cruise to Sydney to see her grandchildren. But whilst on holiday, she's dusting off her dancing shoes and preparing to take to the floor. I just thought this would be, do nicely for the ballroom dance practice. Known as Shell the World to her friends, she likes to party. Dancing on tables is one of my specialities. Once when I worked for British Rail and um, got invited to a leaving party and ended up, after a couple of gin and oranges, dancing on the table in a miniskirt. So after that, I got invited to most people's parties. I enjoyed it, though. I don't care. <laughs> Widowed 18 months ago, she's hoping to find someone to dance with and is heading to one of the 13 ballroom classes on this cruise. I should go along on my own. But it would be nice to have a male dance partner. Yeah, it would be ideal. Today, it's a lesson in merengue. Five, six, seven, eight. But it looks like Shell will have to learn alone. Six. So can we go back to our partners, please? I don't know. I'm hoping for a partner. I'll watch him very carefully. No one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No one, Ooh, two, three, I don't know what to do, but I'll try. Six, seven, eight. I saw you didn't have a partner. <laughs> I came late. Huh? That's looks like you've got a partner. It looks like it. It's you late, then. We're it's dancing. Like Jumped in. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sue isn't the man Shell was hoping for, but she can practice with her while she continues to look for her prints. You did it. We got there. It's the day of the party. Good morning, good morning. And Majestic Princess is approaching the equator. You sleep well last night? Oh, all right, that's good. I sleep like a baby, even though I'm not. The ship is in full-scale prep for the crossing the line party. But there is nowhere under more pressure than the galley. On top of cooking 4,800 eggs, 210 kilos of bacon, and 1,400 croissants for the passengers' breakfast. Make a new one, because these are all dries out. Executive chef Nilo has been tasked with preparing vats of food, including coloured meringue, for the event. 80% is ready. But there is a problem. Where's the jello? Show me, show me, show me. The kitchen has to produce 10 kilos of jelly as the main ingredient for the food fight. <laughs> it's not even a jello. But it isn't setting. Bring it to the freezer. It's liquid. Give me the pastry chef here now. And Nilo's not amused. Good morning. Why is the jello not ready? It's liquid. No, I just this morning. But you don't, because it's liquid. Make sure you find me a jello that is jello. And I want it in half an hour. Ah, this is, makes me crazy in the morning. Well, I try not to have it because I don't want to ruin my day. As Nilo takes a moment... Try to come down. Try to come down. Entertainment director Mark pops in to check up on progress. A little bit concerned that that's a bit wobbly still. 
With less than an hour and a half to go until party time, everything else needs to be on track. Can we have a quick check through? I have all your spaghetti here and fresh eggs. And Mark is not the only one concerned. Food and beverage manager Karen is also checking up. And the salmon? Yeah. Yeah, is this okay with you? Crossing the equator ceremony requires all new seafarers to kiss a fish. For today's event, a four and a half kilo salmon will be on the receiving end of everyone's affections. A very impressive chef. Would you like to kiss? <laughs> All right, so they, they made the jello this morning. Um, it needs to be a, a special consistency. We want it wobbly. Um, we don't want it too hard because it'll just bounce off their heads. We don't want it too soft because in the sun it'll, it'll melt. So we've, we've put it in what we call the glass chiller just to accelerate it. What is plan B? There's no plan B for jello. With breakfast coming to an end, the passengers will soon start heading up on deck. Now you get the fire extinguisher. One thing that must be sorted is the pool. Got it? The water drained, Scott's repair can begin. We've got to get it in service. We use this red sheet just for cover. Just in, Obviously, we're welding in a public area, so if there's any passengers actually look at the weld, it could be dangerous for their eyes. And then you're doing one pass underneath as well? Yeah, yeah. Extra strong. Yeah. Oh. Ah, just the man. Yeah. Ladder's finished, so we can refill it. Jobs are good and... The water's filling up and the entertainment team is dressing up in preparation for their role in the equator party. Can I have two empty balloons and I will blow them to the right size? Would that be okay? Yeah, yeah. Do you want the? Because I need them to fit into my dress, and those ah, are too okay, big. Okay. So, yeah, just two empty balloons. Want... Morning, everybody. Morning. Morning. And entertainment director Mark is continuing to check everything is on track for the big event. Oh dear, I'm just looking through the window. That's not a good sign. Houston, we have a problem. An hour out, and it's absolutely lashing it down. It's a disaster. OK, we've got to start thinking about plan B. If the deck is wet, the crossing the line party won't take place, and hundreds of passengers will be disappointed. Make sure we're not soaking the electric. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Contingency is to push it till tomorrow. Obviously, it wouldn't be on the equator, but I'm sure the guests would understand the reasons why we've delayed it 24 hours. Despite the huge impact on all the passengers, if the tropical downpour continues, there will be no choice but to cancel the party. The crossing the equator party is in an hour and a half, but the rain has put the carefully planned event in jeopardy. So this is the bonus of, of having no hair. It doesn't get frizzy, it dries very quickly. With cancellation looming, there's a fortunate turn in the weather. Well, apparently it's stopped completely now, sun's out. You can get the deck dry. Fingers crossed we'll soldier through. The party will go ahead. I think we'll get our 10,000 steps today. Up on deck, with the ladder fixed, the race is on for Scott to fill the pool with 100,000 litres of water. Who the hell's cut your hair? Uh, Norberto, Winter Palace here. Get your, money, get your money back. <laughs> no, I didn't pay him. Oh, good. It looks like you stuck your head in a potato peeler. Okay. I can't stop looking at it. After checking the pH levels... Booyah! 2.3. The pool is good to go. Open sesame. Good news, yeah. The sun's shining, the pool's getting opened up. The job is done for this morning. You're the first one in. First swimmer. Happy days. If they're happy, I'm happy. At the end of the day, they're paying my wages, so good. Scott might be happy, but down in the galley, there is one man who is anything but. Get me the jello. Where's the pastry chef? Is it firm now? Yeah, almost yeah. Almost firm. How firm? 80%? Five minutes. Five minutes before 10, you bring both of the jello personally, bring it to me on the lobster bar. All right, let's go. There's only minutes to go until the equator party is due to start. Cheers, guys. Have a good one. So final check now is the Royal Entourage, Neptune, Queen Double D. And fingers crossed we're all ready to go in here. OK, uh, can we have uh, Neptune and Queenie at the front, please? Showtime. Up on deck, hundreds of passengers are gathering to experience this maritime tradition, including those who've never crossed the equator before. 
who are waiting for their initiation. Thank you very much for uh, volunteering. At the end, you're going to be quite messy. Morning, everyone. Have fun. Ooh, chocolate. But there is one vital ingredient still missing. I want my jello. We're running just behind schedule at the moment. But um, fingers crossed, we've got a quarter of an hour now. We'll, we'll still go out on time. It's all hands on deck. Caught me a big one today. We got spaghetti, we got flour, we got eggs. We're going to crack them over their head. <laughs> no eggs on okay. me. No eggs on me. <laughs> it's 10 to. You can keep calling the pastry chef, yeah? <laughs> I scream like an, I want my jello! Oh, there you go, my jello. All right, yeah, it's all yours. And just in the nick of time, it all comes together. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Dino Sigani. So I came here so you can uh, see my face. You heard me yesterday, and now, of course, we are very excited. So thank you and enjoy, ladies and gentlemen. Ciao, ciao. It's the moment everyone, including the crew, have all been dreading. How do you please? Yes, yes, Let the sergeant begin. Sergeant for It is official. The majestic princess has passed. We are across the equator. After four days at sea and 1,900 nautical miles since Singapore... Stop this time, trust us. Majestic Princess has made it to Darwin, Australia. Over 600 passengers are making the most of being on dry land to see the Aussie wildlife. Good day, mate. And joining them is guest services trainer Cynthia. Actually, being here makes me miss home quite a lot. I think I felt full of sea salt for a few months. It's good to come out. In 14 years of working on cruises, this is only her third shore excursion. It's so nice to be out here, isn't it? It's just so fresh and the smell of eucalyptus. <coughs> it is eucalyptus, isn't it? it must be. <laughs> what does he do? Why does he do that? She's done that since she was just a little joey. She's perfectly healthy. She just likes to suck on her pellets upside down. <laughs> pellets upside down. <laughs> too funny, isn't it? But Cynthia can't get too used to being away from the ship. Just glad to be back. Back on board. The good old home away from home. After her stop, it's time for Majestic Princess to set sail again making her way around the northern coastline of Australia to the Great Barrier Reef. We have entered earlier on this morning. It was quite a strong current as we were on a beam of uh, Booby Island. Yes, it is called Booby Island. After almost three weeks at sea, it's time for this set of passengers to leave before 3,500 new guests step on board. But before they disembark this evening, the crew are putting on a party to remember. I like to enjoy with the passengers. I like to have a little bit of fun with them, you know? But the most, I like to drive the ship. That's the best. It's the best part of the job, especially this ship, the Majestic. The passengers are all glammed up. Good evening. Come on in. Hello. Hi, Shirley. Dancer Shell the Whirl is ready for the ball with practice partner Sue and hubby Steve. Steve. Chocolate condom. Steve? Guaranteed to make you laugh, oh. Steve. <laughs> Party has started, so I think it's time to go down. How are you tonight? Thank you. Going to the party? Yes. I'll see you down there. After you, Shirley. Good evening. So I usually take the right and then I go around all the deck, try to catch as many passengers as I can. Good evening, Good evening, ladies. Good evening. How are you tonight? Senora, how are you? Very nice to meet you. 
Oh, I might have to run to make a speech. Can I, can I catch you after the speech? I'm number one, thank you. Please put your hands together for Captain Dino Sagai! Ladies and gentlemen, as we say back home, arrivederci. Arrivederci. As the passengers hit the dance floor, Sue and Shell have a final twirl. Can I? I heard that she's looking for a partner. Thank you. Should we try? I'm not getting in trouble with my wife. <laughs> I might have to. So it's been a pleasure, and I hope that I see you again on another cruise. And thank you very much for this beautiful dance. Mwah. That was totally, totally unexpected. Out of the blue. Fabulous. It's like a dream. I think I've just found my ideal dance partner. And who would have expected it? The captain of the ship. Oh, give me a hug. <laughs> Next time, the ship runs into bad weather in New Zealand. Wind is gusting uh, up to 65 to 70 knots. I'd rather it be floating around the boat than in the ocean swimming. And all eyes are on second officer Sean. In position. As he faces the challenge yeah. with dropping the ship's 15-ton anchor. Hopefully I pass the test.